Yes, sorry, before starting, are you a Muslim? Okay, and I assume that uh, you are having a conversation because you don't believe in Christianity, he's a Christian. No, it's not, it's not that, it's just to understand why, why they believe and what they believe. I just, I just like to have a normal conversation. Okay, like... yeah, 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 sure. Uh, I'm Manuel. Alif. So, what's the thing that stops you from believing that Christianity can be true? As a Muslim, what's the thing that you need an explanation, you need a better understanding? If it was us more try to understand his understanding as a Christian and the Jewish people understanding as does it match or does it not match? That's what I was asking. Like, for example, you believe in the Trinity? Yeah. Do, do they believe in the Trinity and do they also worship the Trinity, the Jewish people? Yeah, they believed in a, in a Trinitarian God. So the fact that many Jews today, they don't believe in the Trinity, that doesn't mean that's what the scriptures, the scriptures, the Torah and the prophets say. Um, in fact, there were many Jewish believers. Um, it is, uh, it's been written a book uh, called uh, Two Powers in Heaven. Um, uh, and that's based on uh, how it's called. Uh, Second Temple literature. So rabbis during the Second Temple period, they wrote books, um, non-canonical books, describing that there are, there's more than one person called Jehovah or Yahweh, which is the one God, and that's based on on scriptures. So you see, for example, uh, in Genesis uh, 19 verse 24, when so as a Muslim, do you have the judgment on Sodom and Gomorrah? In Islam, I think that's that's part of your literature, that, that's part of your religion. So you know that there was a judgment on two cities called Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, that's taken from the Old Testament in the Bible. So when you go to the Jewish, Christ, to the Jewish scripture, you see that there's Yahweh. Yahweh appeared in a human form to Abraham, and then he told him, I'm going to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. So then that happened, Yahweh was talking in front of Abraham and then in verse 19 when he's, uh, when he's gonna uh, rain fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah, the verse says that there was Yahweh on earth raining that fire from Yahweh in heaven. And you see lots of passages like that pointing to one more person that shares Yahweh's prerogatives. So I'm not talking about even I'm not talking even about Jesus claiming to be God. I'm telling you that. So who was the Kohen Yahweh, the second person who was destroying the Gomorrah? Who was it? One, I believe, is the Father, and one is Christ. One will become. So in the New Testament, is the one that became Jesus Christ. So took a human nature. So the, the human that came in, the other human, who was it? Who was that? Was it Father or was it the Son? Which human? Somebody Sorry. came to destroy the Gomorrah, right? You just talk about, right? Yes. So, it came as a man, right? Yes, in a human in a form. Human form. So, who was it? Was it I the believe, Holy Spirit or was it the Son? I believe that was Jesus Christ. So, but that time was the second person of the Spirit, the second person of the, the second person of the Trinity. But it wasn't Christ because what we consider Christ is when that person became a human being, because at that time it had a, it had a human form doesn't mean that he had a... Oh, sorry, you don't consider that person to be the Christ? What do you say? Can you tell me again? So the person Jesus, Jesus is a human being that was born 2,000 years ago. And what we believe as Christians is that that person, the being, the spiritual being, is the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is the kind of man that appeared to Abraham on earth. So the, why the angel of the Lord is not called as the son of God? Because the son of God was already there. Yeah, who is telling that uh, is not called Son of God? Sorry? Nobody is saying that is not called Son of God. In that moment, is not called Son of God. It's called Angel of God. It's Angel of the Lord. It has many titles, but when you see prerogatives, you know that he's talking always about the same person. So, for example, in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah, if, I'm, if I can recall it well, Isaiah 66, it says, uh, no, I think it's Isaiah 40. Uh, I beg your my apologies. But there's one chapter in the book of Isaiah that is saying, one day the Lord will come to his temple and he's saying the, the word singular, 
and the angel of the Lord. So both are one in that uh, in that in that particular part of scripture. The angel of the Lord comes as a human being, right? Many times or few times or right? In the Old Testament. Well did he come as, as a in man? a human form. In a form few times, two times? Yes. Okay. So what about this Messiah they are waiting for? Who is this Messiah then? Jesus. The angel of the Lord was Jesus, right? Yes. So they are waiting for the Messiah to come yes. as a human form. Yes. So what is so special? Because he was already coming here many times. So what was the special? Because he didn't do the sacrifice. So what mattered and what matters is that people does it say in the Old Testament the Messiah will come and die as a sacrifice? Yes. It does Isaiah 53. What does it say? It says that uh, the servant of the Lord is talking about one theme, one big theme in the book of Isaiah is the servant of the Lord. It's the servant, not a servant. The servant. But the servant itself is like a servant of God. It's not the son of God. Okay, right? yeah. So in okay. that sense... Yeah, well, if you want, I can build the narrative of the servant. Yeah. So in Isaiah 53, so before that you have Isaiah 9 saying that the servant will be born, will be born of a virgin and he will come, God is with us, he will become a mighty counselor and God mighty. That's the Holy Spirit, God with us. And Jesus come back to heaven. Jesus come back to heaven, that's where he belongs and he sent the Holy Spirit. That's yes. Okay, yes, but yeah. I, be I believe that. Do you believe? Sorry. So why is he called Do you believe Rahman is God? Rahman. Allah Ar Rahman. The mercy of God. No, no, Ar Rahman. Ar Rahman. The Ar Rahman, Allah yeah. Quran, Allah yeah. Insan, yeah, he's the one who created a human being. So you know what is Ar Rahman? Ar Rahman is it's the Holy Spirit, the one who will help you create. Oh, that's So for them, they don't understand. Ar Rahman, I know that he is the Holy Spirit. Ar Rahman is God. No, he but, is God. But we, we can't is a separate no. person, but with Allah it's not a separate person. It's a bit different. Yeah, but the divine God Elohim, he doesn't come to talk. Yeah, but, but he said the Holy Spirit. Based, based on Isaiah 9, it says that a, chi that a child will be born. He's yes, talking about a human being. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Will be born. Yeah. He will be called um, Mighty Counselor, uh, God with us, and God Mighty. Which is the same title, Egibor, God Mighty. If he's calling a servant, and if he's calling a child, who did not immediately imply that it is not God himself? Do you think they... Someone close to God, but not God himself? Do you think they, like, they, meant, you... they meant a small God? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or like God that. himself? But that's parallel in the New Testament. For example, in the book of uh, Philippians, Philippians 2, says that Jesus, being in, in the nature of God, Right. of God, not a kind of semi-divine or demigod or anything like that, being God in nature took the form of a servant. Right. So the God Almighty became a servant and that's why they had to wait for the Messiah. Is the Father is Almighty or the Son is Almighty? Or the Both Almighty. are Almighty. Even the Holy Spirit is also Almighty? Yes. Right. Because when you go even to the Old Testament, it says that the creation of the world happened with a partnership of uh, three persons. But they're not three gods, they're three persons. No, they are one God, it's one, one, essence. one essence. One essence. So one essence that is eternally given from the Father to the Son and the Holy Spirit, so why, but without why beginning. Son? Why could you not have a daughter or a brother? Why only son? No, no, the son in your conception. Yeah. I'm from Syria. Right. So I can call myself the son of Syria. Does right. that mean Syria, other country? No. You got to me? No, no, no. 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 So that's what they mean. Oh, is that what you mean? Yes, of course. Yeah, God but... God doesn't have a body that he becomes biologically. Yeah, okay. but without biology, one of the reasons why, and that's what I believe, is called the Son of God, is so because... It's what sense is Son of God? Is it like he created or no? He's not created because he's, he's eternally. Created. So, he's eternal. as a Christian, what I believe is, you are a Muslim, right? Yeah. So, God existed always. There's yeah. no beginning for no God, beginning. right? There's no beginning. So, he always had his attributes eternally, without beginning. Right. You can go back in time, back in eternity, and so I there's... So, the point of the Father, so why only Son then? Why only Son came as existed? Like, we only believe God is only one person, right? Yes. He has got no fair parents, no children, nothing, right? There's only one person. Yeah, but person. the Christian also believe that he has no children, biologically. Right. Yeah. Okay. When, when we know for Allah Muhammad, yeah, yeah, yeah. Muhammad, he said here he never biologically begotten a son. Biologically. Yeah. Yeah. 
And also he mentioned he's only one person, there is no other. No, the one person is Ila Elohim. Is, is a, is a, is a, yeah, but the one who talked to us, who with us, is Rahman. Right. Do you know that? Yeah, but it's, it's the one person as well. It's not that. It doesn't have a distinction like what Yeah, but David if you're going to say it's one person, Rahman Allah, then you are confirming that uh, they are one. No, God but their thing is a distinct <laughs> person. With the Ar-Rahman, is not distinct. So you, you believe Ar-Rahman is God? Is, is God himself, like the Father himself. So that's what yeah, I believe, okay. the Holy Spirit no, is God. But there's okay. God, that's can, called distinct person. I can, I can, like I can give you... I can give you... cannot do anything. Okay. I can give you. Yes, yeah. but he cannot do anything himself. Okay, I can give you an analogy with the Trinity. You see, the, the Holy Spirit, it, it it can things and does things right separately, right? Like a different person. Yeah, but when we define different persons, okay, I will go to that point. Let me say something that you mentioned, and I think it's uh, worth uh, speaking about. So when we say uh, God has a son, God has just one son. So God has. As Christians, we consider it, we consider ourselves children of God, but not because we have divine attributes in the same way Jesus has divine attributes. So, because He inherits all the attributes of the Father, what attributes uh, are applicable to the Father or identified with the Father? Creator, Almighty, um, all loving, yeah. perfect. Jesus have all that. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. The, so all these attributes are. You see, the Rahman doesn't have all that attributes. You know, the Rahman it says he cannot pray. He doesn't have mercy. That's what we understand. I understand your point. But their understanding is the Son also can create. He's talking. He's not talking about Rahman. You're confusing. We have a Rahman yeah, yeah. and we have a Rahim. Right. A Rahim what does it mean? Full mercy. Right. Yeah. For them, a Rahim, the one mercy for and and and, and unloving, is Jesus. Yeah. For us, for for us, Jesus is the Lord of God. We call him the Son. But, but they are understanding it a little bit different. They also of course call, they are, because, they yes. because they also call the word of God as a, like a separate distinct from God. That's why it's called the Son of God. Because the word of God, we don't call him a Son of God. But you know what I'm saying? Like brother yes. of God. Or different name. One question. Do you believe Adam, the spirit of Adam, is eternal and it comes from God? Well, What's the difference between Adam's spirit and Jesus' spirit? Yeah. I believe that all spirits Come from God. Yeah. Come from God, and human spirits are infinite. I make a distinction human between infinite. Inf infinite. Eternal. eternal. When we say eternal, I, I assume that there's no beginning. So I'm as a human being, I will live eternally. Human beings will go to heaven or hell, and that has no end. But then God, just like God created us. Yes, there's no. no there's a beginning. You have a beginning. I have a beginning. He has a beginning. So we are created. I believe. I believe exactly. Have a beginning. So would you be destroyed? Would you be finished? Sorry, who we will are be? created. Yes, we are not God. We are not God. Okay. Yes. So we have a beginning. We have a beginning. Let's say we live billion, 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 billion years. After yes. that, God say, okay, I finish you. Destroy. Yes. Yes. It can be done. Yes. You say something about the spirit is spiritual, right? Uh, well, eternal. He, yeah, he asked me. Infinite. Yeah, yeah. Mean it has a beginning. Yeah. Infinite oh, means has a beginning, has no end. That's why a human being ah. has a beginning. That's infinite. So you can start from one point and there's no end. That's to me, the, the term eternity, that's why it's important when we no speak end, no to clarify, means no beginning, no end, always. Makes sense. Now, so, in the Quran, yeah. I'm not eternal. I have a beginning. Okay. 1978, before 1978, I wasn't. Right. But now I will exist forever. We can say okay. hell okay. or heaven. Uh, that's, what, that's another thing. Okay, now can you show me in the Quran where the spirit of Adam yeah is created for them. It's not created. We know the spirit of Adam has come from God. Yeah? So, so it has a beginning because God created Adam and he knows the spirit of him. And it has no end. It's still in line with the Quran. So, is the spirit of Adam, now we can say, nearly eternal, yeah? Infinite. As long as God wants. Okay, is the spirit of Adam is divine? No. Because it's come from God? No, but it's not divine. What do you say? Sorry. The spirit of Adam is it divine because it comes from God. He blow into Adam. But again, then we when, we, when we define, you have a spirit. Are you divine? I mean, I'm created in the image of God. Means that I reflect some things of God. Yeah. Divine is like these are terms we have to be careful. Doesn't mean that I can perform miracles. Doesn't mean that I can create fire. Doesn't mean no. I'm not divine in that way. I'm divine in 
in, in the sense that I can reflect God's goodness but you are in a divine. finite way. But you are divine, you are very different than anyone. You are able to calculate, you are able to do things, so you are a lot smarter. And that's why God told the angel. So when I can research to him. Bow down to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are very And proud. I can know God because I have reason. God yes. has made me a reasonable person. Makes sense. Whereas so, the animal don't know. Uh, an animal is created but they have no sense about God or the existence of a supernatural being, anything like that. So to clarify, because he was asking me about uh, uh, so Christianity. Why you Jesus as the son? He was the word, isn't it? So Let me explain something. Now we know that the spirit of Adam is very smart and it comes from God. Okay. This is the spirit of Adam. Now we have Jesus. Jesus has a spirit, but not a normal spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. That's why when he born, he was able to talk because he is very, very smart. Allah smarter than you. He can, he can, he can knows what exactly what you are thinking. But his spirit is a lot smarter than you. It's a holy one. It's mentioned in the Quran. And he, yeah. he empowered with the can Holy I, Spirit. Can I make a point? Just to, because I, uh, that's a fair question. And I know that that's uh, the question that uh, that struggles to many Muslims. So when we say the Son of God, is that what we mean by that is that the Son of God, the Word of God, we call Jesus the Word of God, He inherits God's, the Father's attributes. The Father's attributes are His eternal, without beginning, without end. And the Bible, the Bible calls Jesus the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That title that in Isaiah is applied to God. So, why can't we say Jesus is Father, infinite, for example? Right? But no, to, to, to Jesus as well. In the New Testament, Jesus is called God Almighty, and also He's called the, uh, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. What we mean... But that's in the New Testament. Does it apply in the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, you can see that title. Who said, well, in the Old Testament, who said, I am the Alpha and the Omega? Is it the Father, the Son, and the Holy no, Spirit? No, Jesus at that time, He was not born. But they know that the promised Son is coming. Someone was... About to come, and then he well, comes. In, in the Old Testament times, Jesus was not born. Probably. Yeah, can I explain it? Because, okay, yeah. Yeah, let, me, just, let, me just, let me just explain it, explain it to you. So, we believe in the eternal Son of God. Okay. Eternal Son of God. Yeah. So, we believe eternally before the world was created, God always existed as a trinity. So, there's God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they always existed like that, one God, because it's the same essence for the three of them, and the source of that essence is the Father. He generates, he doesn't create, because create is, the act of creating is providing a beginning to something or someone. But does it not generate can also be and he created? You don't have to use the but, word, because you see, in many ways there are many words, has many different understandings of it. Like if Father is generating them, does it not mean he's also been created? For example, if you have a grandfather and if you have a son, that means the grandfather came first, then you came second, and then he came last. It didn't come at the same time, right? So if God is saying he's my son, in whatever sense you're looking at, is he not implying that he came after me? He was generated by me, right? Yes, but what we, what we mean by generating is distinct from creation. Creating is another thing. Creating is out of nothing, you create someone or something with a beginning. So there wasn't before. What if, I mean, if, what I mean, if yeah. If Father generated them, that means they was not there before, right? No. It, it doesn't no. mean that. No, what we believe so is that always, sense? so God the Father, without beginning, always, always existed, generating the Son. So we don't believe that in eternity, at some point, the Father was alone, and then he made the decision to generate the Son. No, we believe the that they won't there, but how always. Come, how come there is no other thing then? Because why is he calling son then? Why there is no sister? Because you're brother? applying the biological understanding of son. So what, so what is the understanding of your son? You are using, you are using your understanding of uh, biological beings and you're applying that to God. That's why we make a distinction. So what is the son then? In, in what sense? Not biologically. In the son is, that's the difference. When we say that God always existed like that, right. father generating the son, so imagine in Islam, God has no beginning, right? So he always existed. So the same way we believe that in Christianity, God always existed, but with this dynamic relationship. He's the source. He's the source that gives power and life to the Son and the Holy Spirit. But that source didn't, didn't begin at any point in eternity. Always existed like that. 
That's why it's one God, because that essence... But not one God, it's a unity of God, right? It's a unity of persons, unity but of it's persons. just one, one essence. Because in that way, for example, when we talk and we say things, for example, that God in Islam is uh, Rahman al-Rahim, how do you apply that before creating the universe? How can God be Rahman al-Rahim before the creation of human beings? Who was God merciful to? You already had that. But you believe that he had an attribute, but it wasn't applied to anything. No, it doesn't have to be. Because, like, for example, before he created anything, was he a creator? Yeah, we can say that yes. he is the potential creator. Yes. Same like that, before he created anything to show mercy or to show punishment, he, was, he already had that. But he didn't apply those attributes in he, eternity. He so in eternity, not... he wasn't actively a god. Sorry? So in eternity, before the creation of everything, yeah. in the understanding of Islam, God didn't apply his attributes. He had them like switched off. Were they switched off or switched on? He had that. Yes. Right? Okay, you believe he had them. But then the problem is that that's why I believe the Trinity makes more sense. Because in the Trinity, we can believe that God is uh, Braham, uh, Rahman al-Rahim because he applied those attributes eternally. But he was loving. The loving is not a separate person. What you're saying, the Son and the Holy Spirit is a separate and distinct person, right? Yes. But the, the, the mercy or the knowledge or the understanding or the thinking of God is not a separate person. It's the, it's the same person. But with the with the Trinity, is 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 a separate. Per That's why you mentioned person. Why do you think you mentioned person? Because they have, they can think. Yes. They can feel. They can do stuff. Right. Yes. Because it's a different person. But because but with the with the with the with the God, the, the knowledge of God, the thinking of God, the mercy of God, or the hate of God, they cannot they cannot think. They cannot do anything by themselves because they're not separate person. Yes. So that's what the difference is a little bit compared to the Trinity. And yes. uh, what was the understanding of the Jewish people then? Because going to Muslim is probably not going to be very helpful because it's a very different understanding of God. But the Jewish understanding and your understanding, does it matches up to the thing also that God has three persons? God is yes. three persons? And... Yes, for example, yeah. uh, the Gospel of John, and I'm going to compare it to, to, to a passage in, to, uh, in, in Genesis. Genesis okay. is Jewish scripture. Okay. Uh, New Testament is Jewish scripture because uh, it was written by Jews, not all of them. But some, uh, most of the New Testament was many, written by how, apostles. How many different denomination is in the Jewish religion? Like even in Christian, there's so many differences, right? Yes. Understanding, believe, and they even fight and kill each other for many of the reasons. Even in Muslim, there are a few differences. How many differences is in Jewish religion? Uh, to my understanding, I think particularly when the first, uh, when they built the second temple, um, there was the creation. So I'm talking, uh, the, the second temple probably was uh, 400 years before the coming of Christ. So probably uh, 2,500 years ago. What I wanted to understand, like for example, in Christianity, you have Orthodox, yes. Protestant, yes. they have different yes. beliefs, that, different that, understandings. That's what I'm trying Same to say. Word. Yeah, I think the Jews, when they had the prophets, and they were more united. Okay. Um, when the first temple was destroyed, right and then the second temple was built, is when they didn't have so many prophets, as far as we can know, and then ramifications of sex came to happen. So Jewish, particularly before five, uh, 500, year, 500 years before the coming of Christ, so 15, uh, 20, uh, 2,500 years ago, is when they had lots of, uh, lots of calls, lots of sex. I don't know if lots, but they had. Yeah. So, a little so, bit like in Christianity yes. and Islam. And today, particularly yeah. today, yeah. you have a wide range of variety of Jewish yes. sects. So many of them, they would, they would consider themselves equally good. Like, I consider many, many Christian denominations yeah. good. Okay. I have differences with them, okay. but I would say they are equally Christians. Okay. I would say other people, I'm not that sure, right. but many of them, I would say... Within your... Yeah, framework. within the spectrum so, of Christianity. And same thing may happen with them. Right. Others, I know that others consider that uh, this sect is not a true sect or is not a true, a faithful part of the of the Jewish people. 
in a religious way. When you said the Father generated the Son and the Holy Spirit, in, in, in what sense then? Like, can, can, the, can the Son generate the Father? No. No. So that's the, the difference. The that, that, that's why we believe. That's, and that's a, that's a very yes. Father generated, uh, generates yes. eternally. Yeah, and he's and generating and always. So always. he's the source. So he didn't give him power in a moment. He's always uh, giving him life. Who the son? The father to the son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Who Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Is it the father? Is it the it's son? not created. Oh, it sorry, proceeds. Generated. It proceeds from the father and the son. Generates the Son. Yes. And then the Holy Spirit is generated from the Father and the Son. Yeah, Catholics believe that. Okay. That it proceeds Are you from. Uh, no, I'm consider myself not a strongly Anglican, but that's uh, I'm on a journey in that. So, so but what is I mean, your I... background then? What is your parents' background? Was it? What? How did you brought up? With? In terms of Christianity, you used to be a Catholic. Calvinist. Calvinist. It's a Protestant. It's a. Uh, it's a, ram it's a ramification, it's a branch of Protestantism. Okay. But I moved to a more Anglican understanding. So what was the Protestant belief then? I always believed. No, what was the Protestant belief? Are you talking about your belief or Protestant? No, no, no. Okay. There's, there's a whole variety of uh, beliefs within okay. the Protestant umbrella. It's not Protestants so are not Protestant like belief? Catholics. Catholics, let's say, they believe all the same. And Orthodox, they believe all the same. Right. Uh, and Protestants, there are many from uh, many branches within Protestantism. So that would be so you used to a very long... That, I used to be part move, of that. So to now you move to a different... Anglican, yeah. ...understanding, which is almost similar or, or slightly different? The Trinity hasn't changed. The Trinity hasn't changed? Yes. So what has changed in your life? Predestination. In, uh, okay, so what is the predestination? That God ha is, let's say, for example, a child offender, God is so sovereign. So in Calvinism, uh, well, not all Calvinists believe exactly the same, but they more or less, in some degree, they all agree that God predestined everything, even sin, even crimes, even everything. Okay, right. Well, so there's, the, the point and, and is... what do you believe then now? So the big point is that for Calvinists, in a way, there's no free will okay well, and i believe that i have free will okay right so now that, that's a big thing that a that's a big thing yeah because side. when you believe in a god like that i think sometimes um uh, it's very difficult to to, to believe that he's so loving and okay. all that and he gives the same opportunity to everybody right. so yeah so that's the difference okay, okay nothing to do with the trinity the trinity hasn't changed right, right. but yeah okay everything kind of remains the same so, are you sorry can i ask you are you a sunni shia I'm a, I'm a Sunni. Sunni. So, yeah, so, um, so the, the generated thing is, the, so you said the father generated the two. Yes. But can any of them generate the father? No. They can't. That's what I believe. That's what you believe. Does the Trinity, no. all the yeah. most of the Trinity so, believe that or they believe in a different way? Most of them would say the same thing most I have said. Them? I would say that many people haven't even wondered a question like that. The reason I believe... So, is that, is that the reason when I Jesus was saying the Father is greater than I? Is that what he was referring to? That? Sorry, I couldn't. Could so, so, when Jesus was saying that the Father is greater than I, right? Yes. In a, in a sense. So, is that what he's meaning? Like, the Father generates the two and the uh, Father is in a greater... Yeah, you mean that's in the Gospel of John, I think I said. Yeah, when, I think that's in chapter 14. And you have to look at the context. When Jesus is saying the Father is greater than I, you have to bear in mind. Is, is he meaning? Is he, is he trying to understand? Is he trying to tell that in the sense he's a human being, and Father is, or he's saying I am the Godhead, and then even the even in the Godhead, the Father is the greater. No. Let me finish one thing we said before, and I'm going to explain that to you. Uh, you I, I wanted to point to a fact in Genesis and in the Gospel of John, and that's going to help me build what you are asking me. So, the beginning of the Gospel of John, written by the same author, says in the first three verses, says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So, he's saying that that Word that is identified with Christ is the Word of God, and the same text 
says that is Christ, is Jesus. He's saying that was with God in the beginning. When he's saying in the beginning, is a reference to Genesis, like before the creation of everything. So it was already there, pre-existent. Is God, and through Him, everything was made. So He doesn't the word. So and when you go to say to Genesis. And you see how God created everything. Yeah, he he says, let there be light. in the beginning and everything. No, he says, let there be light. So obviously he used this word, let there be water, let there be Exactly. Earth, right? But well, the first verse is, in the beginning, it is the same, it is the same beginning, in the beginning. And then it says, let, let there be light, let there be uh, seasons, let there be plants, let there be birds, all that. And when God creates Adam and Eve, human beings, the first human being, he say, let us, in plural, let us create man in our, not in my, in our image. So it's saying, let us create, plural, that's not angels, he's saying, let us create. Which is in the Trinity, right? Exactly. So when, in the Deuteronomy, the God also called himself, it is I, only I and God, before me there is no God, after me there is no God. But if so Jesus is also God with the Father, and in the Gospel of John, he's saying that he's one with the Father, then there is this singularity. So why, if he's, if he's God saying he's us, let us make man in our own image, so what is he referring? Is he referring us, one unity, right? Yes. Us referring one unity, okay? In the same God, when he's referring, it is I, it is me, it is him. Before me there is no, before after me there is no God. What is he referring? Is that me is referring to unity? Yes. So, yes. So when you say, because if so we got, and you ask me another thing about the yeah. Gospel of John, the, the Father is greater than I, so I'm happy to respond to all of that. So when you go to the, yes, fair, 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 please. So can a God who is us can also refer himself as one, as one person? Yes. For example, for example, uh, you know the Shema, the Jewish Shema, uh, listen God, that's in Deuteronomy 6, 4. And when it says the word, uh, the Lord is one, yeah, yeah. it's applying the word, the Hebrew word, ehat. What does it mean? One unity. Because when you go to the book of Genesis, um, chapter 2, verse, I think, 24. Wait, is there any other meaning for ahad as well? Yes. What, so, no, no, no meaning. Uh, it, it's the same. Ehad, right? ehad yeah. Sorry? Ehad. 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 So, how many meaning of there are? There can also mean single? Can also it's mean one. one that can encompass like a unity of something, like one humanity. Is the word one, but humanity, how many human beings are on earth? Six, seven billion, right? So it's a unity, it's a unity. When you go... Many human beings, right? Yes. So when it says it's a unity of God, okay, try to understand this. You said it's a unity of human beings. When did I say that? You just, you just said, like human beings are 7 billion people, and you just said something like that. That's an example, yeah. Example of unity of When we use the word one, one, we say one humanity. humanity. But it's not say it doesn't mean there is just one human being. It means many human beings is there, right? Exactly. It can encompass that meaning. It can so, encompass so, that meaning. So when you're saying there is one God, but you're saying unity of God, can you then imply as many gods? No, because there's just one essence. So, so there is no so independent gods. The, understanding of it like when you talk to the human under like you, you, when you mention a human being you say one human being but there's many humans in there yes but when you're talking about unity of god then you're not saying it's multiple gods exactly. you're just saying one god exactly because the one god would not then apply as unity of god Do you understand? correct yeah 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 and i believe that so i believe there is a unity of persons there is one single essence and that perfection that essence of perfection makes that these three persons who never disagree with each other because they share perfection. And in perfection, you cannot commit or disagree in imperfect decisions. That's why, for example, in John chapter 5, Jesus is saying that he is one with the Father. He is one in the same way that God the Father is the judge of every living creature, so is Christ. Uh, Christ is also, in the same way the Father gives eternal life 
to those he wants to give eternal life, that's he also gives eternal what life. Said. That's not what unity means, right? Yeah, but that's I'm explaining. I'm because explaining says, to you the unity. I am the Father is one, right? Yes. So because Father and Him is two persons. Yes, right? but one no? essence and one purpose. I'm just trying to tell you and explain to you that when we say that yeah. God is three persons, is one God in three persons, that essence doesn't imply that they are three independent persons. They make decisions without considering the other. So John chapter 5, Jesus explains that ev everything I see the Father do, that's what I do. He doesn't have a separate will, a will that goes against the Father. So that's why I mean... He doesn't have a separate will. Okay, right. An independent will without the Father. That's why many Muslims, for example, when we tackle this topic, yeah. they sometimes believe that uh, because there are three persons, then no, the they, Father wants to do reason, some, one thing and the Son wants to do another thing. Believe, they believe that because of the example that you gave, you said humanity is one humanity, oh sorry, mankind is something you said, but there are multiple human beings in it. That's yes. what a unity means. So when you try to give the same example for the God, you say there's one unity of God, but there's three persons, so that would, based on the example that you give, it would mean three God. But then you are trying, trying to explain the example of that is in a bit different sense. You are saying, no, it's not three God, it's one God, but three persons, but somehow it's a unity of God, because the unity means many itself. No, when right? we, we, we believe in a plurality of persons, yeah. yes, three persons. So that should mean that there should have been a plurality of God, but somehow you're saying you believe in a plurality of, but then it's a one. Like, no, because we also believe in the Shema. Right. So God is one. And Jesus, one plural, right. Yes, because when you go to Genesis 2, the word uh, Ehad, so the word is, Ehad. Is there any other meaning for Ehad or just one meaning, the plural? I don't know if there's one, one uh, if there's one, Can, uh, just means one. one person. Can mean, for example, well, but well, at least, at least the so fact. If that can mean a one person, so why is it not referring one person in the particular sense that your Lord and our Lord is? Involved? Because the uh, because the God of the Israelites at that point he revealed himself in a uh, in a God with uh, different persons. So, so the one Israel God, Israel yeah. So for example, Deuteronomy comes after Exodus. Deuteronomy comes after after Exodus. Exodus. So yeah. the. The events taking place in the book of Deuteronomy come after the events of Moses liberating uh, the Israelites from the bondage of the Egyptians. So, and when you see the revelation of God, for example, in Genesis, they believe that, that let us create mankind in our image, that plurality. Uh, then you see that God is talking to Moses and at the same time he's saying, uh, follow uh, now you have to follow this angel the angel me doesn't mean always uh, angelical beings so the word for angel is a uh, speaker of that's what also that's why also we call him the word of God because he's the speaker of God so he's the best representative so in Exodus best representative. Is so he's the absolute representative right. and then when you go to Exodus 23 you see that God is talking delivering a message to Moses saying like now, uh, obey this angel who has my name, what name? Yahweh, one name, but he's, he's saying to him, he's not saying I, to him, because he can, he will judge those who mistreat you, he will bless those who bless you. And when you go to the book of Genesis, Yahweh is the one that I myself will bless but those who bless you. Father gives the authority to whoever the angel was, then the angel doesn't have any authority. It's the father who gave the authority to that angel to do whatever it was sent to be done, right? You can say that, and in a way what we believe because as... In, in, in what sense you understand the three person as a God, but those three person do not have individual will. Like, it's just one will, which is the will of the father, right? No. No. They have the will of the essence of the father, of the attributes of the father, but they make the decisions. So, for example, Jesus says that, and that's responding to a question you made in the beginning. Why is that? It was important. I, I will try to respond okay, this, yeah, yeah. but we sometimes we have left behind certain questions that you right, asked me. Right, right. So, yeah, sorry, I forgot. So you told me we were talking about different wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, no, it's getting <laughs> yeah. So let's yeah. come here. Separate wheels yeah, yeah, yeah. and 
No, not in the in the in, because they share the same perfection. That's why he's the son of God. That's why we call him the son of God. So he's not a separate being. If you and I are not family, uh, you are independent of me. But my son is not independent of me. As human beings, we work in different ways. We want to be independent because we want to build different families. But in eternity, the son of God, he always existed with the father. And in a way, that's why we believe that in the Trinity, there are different roles. The father generates the son. The son, in a way, observes the father as the cause of his existence, but without beginning. That's important, without beginning. How, if, if father generated the son, then the son could not generate himself, right? No. He has eternal life without beginning and to the fullness. He is almighty. He is almighty. He has all the attributes of the father, like example, but he, he didn't, he didn't come, he didn't, well, he never came up. He always existed without beginning, remember, and that title. But without father generating him, he could not have existed, right? You are applying uh, human understanding to that. You are applying that generating means that there's no generation and at some point there is, there is generation. But what we believe as Christians is that that generation never started, always existed eternally like that. That's the mode of existence of God. And when you, when you think about the Trinity, then all the attributes of God make sense. Why? Rahman and Rahim, God is merciful. Why do we believe that? Because He always was merciful to the Son and the Son to the Father. So when we believe that God is so loving, we believe that with all the consequences because in eternity, God wasn't switched off from the attribute of, uh, of love but he always was perfectly loving. So in the Gospel of John, so Jesus God, says that... When, when God uh, punished many human beings for their, for their wrongdoings, right? So, yes. So does the, God also have some sort of hate as well, right? It's a punishment, otherwise he would not have punishment. So, so Father did not punish the Son or the Holy Spirit. Does that mean Father did not have that? So the father, the father did not punish the son and the. Like for example, the father punishes human beings for their yes. sins, right? Yes. So it's kind of like a hate or punishment. It's not love. It's different than love, right? Or mercy. That's justice. Okay, justice, right? Justice. So, father did not punish the son and the Holy Spirit to have the ju the justice, right? So does that mean he did not have the justice or? Are you talking about the cross or are you talking about like no, talking about the attribute said, of justice? You said in order for there is nobody to sh God show love to. Ah, okay. Right? So God has to have love always in order to show them. I know what you mean. And then right? you are applying that so similar, to the attribute of God justice. Only have love, right? Yes, right? so in eternity. God, yeah, but God justice. Has other yeah. Other stuff. But justice. So did God have that? Or yes, not? because justice doesn't mean doesn't mean always punishing. So if you can be just when someone is good, so you don't that's punish. That's the thing I meant. Like that's what we understand in the, in the Islam understanding. That in order to punish the just justice, like you don't have to create and then come the justice, right? Yes. Same like that. In order to show love or mercy, you don't have to have somebody else there to show the love. He's already there. Do you understand? Yes. So that's how our understanding came. Okay, up. but so, that does, for example, that makes sense in the eyes of Christianity. I know what you mean, you made a good yeah, point. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's a good point. But let us also bear in mind that the attribute of justice, one aspect or one requirement of justice is to punish wrongdoing. But that doesn't mean that... No, but you understand what I meant. And you yes. actually got it. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. But so you can be just, but then it makes sense in Christianity because justice is also, also means be good when things are going well, then in Christianity it makes sense because the God of justice applied good justice within, within the Godhead and within the, tr within the Trinity, the three persons of the Trinity. He applied justice. In a good way. So what is justice? What is to be a good God? Is to love. So the justice of God is also the love of God. His love is his justice. So so, for example, you in Islam, um, 
you also, I guess you also believe that God loves you if you do things well. Then he will show you love. He will take you to paradise. Would you say that if he is one and he's just one, one, when his justice has nothing to do with love when he judges people? So you tell me again. Yes. Would you say that justice is separate from the attribute of love when he judges people? It is, because if justice and love is not separate, then justice cannot be done. For example, if you love somebody, right? Yes. Even if the murder, you will not, you will not punish them. So you then believe that these attributes must be in a way separate. They cannot be the same. Because you cannot both you cannot have both love and justice at the same time if someone is doing wrong. If someone is blaspheming or mistreating or doing a crime, you cannot apply both attributes at the same time, right? So if somebody is doing blasphemy, would God just forgive them based on you? I'm asking you in, in Islam. So that's my point. And that will show you, that may help you see why it's necessary to have a triune God. Why is necessary, you're saying? Why God, the triune God, is the necessary being? Because when we tackle the attributes of God, the attributes of God are fulfilled and make sense in the Trinity. But when you go to the God of Islam, to me, sorry to speak with... It doesn't make sense to you. Exactly. Why? Because as you say, justice and love, in a way, must be separate. Right. They cannot mingle with each other. Because you cannot love those who deserve hell. How can you love someone that will go to hell? So ca how can you love what a sinner? The, uh, Old Testament, Old, Old Testament say about that? What does it say? The, the, the Old Testament, that's why the Old Testament always pointed to the coming of the Messiah. No, what was the punishment and love between the Old Testament? If somebody blasphemy against God, what does God do then? Some of the, some of the sins were unforgivable. Some of the sins were, were unforgivable. Right. So, so I'm sure that? I'm sure you are aware that in the Old Testament there was the sacrificial system. Yeah, yeah. They had animals to sacrifice to provide forgiveness. There was uh, the Passover. Not for massive, not for massive uh, sins, right? For example, if somebody did adultery, can you just give them sacrifice and forgive them, or you have to stone to them? Yeah, then you have to stone to them. So there were there were many there were many so sins that they were not, not forgiven. Sacrifice is not really for massive ones, it's probably for... There was a limit. So there my point is that in the Old Testament, the animal sacrifice provided forgiveness to an extent. Yeah, yeah. Just to an extent. Then there, was the, there, were, there were daily sacrifices and there was the Passover. That was the forgiveness of the people to continue in the land. So every time that a priest performed... So yeah, and that's the point. So the sacrificial system in the Old Testament pointed to Christ, and that's why we believe. Oh, you think he was pointed to Christ? Exactly, and that's even what uh, what what the, the Old Testament says that God will provide a lamb. For example, uh, you have a story in the Old Testament, Abraham. Uh, goes to Moria. You believe that it was uh, Ibrahim, we believe that it was Isaac, but the point in the story is that Abraham was released or set free from sacrificing his son when he was about to stab him. And then an angel, the angel of the Lord appeared in heaven, identified as Yahweh as well, because the point is the angel of the Lord, he said he belongs to the Lord, but he's also the Lord. Anyway, he said, he said, like, yeah, uh, Abraham, you have been faithful to me. And Abraham said a prophecy, like, um, because he saw a lamb. No, a ram, sorry, a different animal. And Abraham said, God will provide here in the Mount of Moria a lamb in the future. And in the same mountain, Jesus was sacrificed. And he was called the so lamb. In the same mount. In the same mount, sorry, mount. in the same mount, in the same, on the same hill. He was sacrificed. And Jesus is identified as the lamb of God. The sacrifice, the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. The absolute sin. So he's the lamb, the, sacri the if, sacrifice that... If, if the sacrifice of the, the lamb, any of the sacrifice, had a limit, 
right? For massive sin, it cannot be given, like the idolatry or any other big sin. The person had to be killed or had to be punished. Then why this sacrifice supersedes the other sacrifice? Because the other sacrifice was only for, and it had a limit, as you said, it has a limit. It cannot be applied to everything. So why this sacrifice supersedes and it supersedes everything? Why, why is that? Yeah. yeah, because the sacrifice of an animal cannot cleanse the the conscience that was a sacrificial system that in a way was made as a reference to Christ in the future and the reason why we believe that that the sacrifice of Christ supersedes the the sacrificial system is because he was but does the Old Testament condemns of human sacrifice has there, has there ever been any human sacrifice in the Old Testament you understand? Because the sacrifice system has been changed. God is sending a human being to be sacrificed, or as a human being, like Jesus, God came down as a human being, so it's a human sacrifice. He did not come as a lamb or a ram. Not in a systematic way. Not in a, not in a systematic way. System. Not because God said you have to do this. So there were instances uh, where people, uh, where God took the blood. Well, no. The there is no in the Old there Testament. There is no. Sacrifice? There was no human sacrifice that God commanded. So did God commanded not to do human sacrifice? Like he commanded not to do human sacrifice, human sacrifice, because the only human sacrifice that really for that really takes away the sin of the world is the sacrifice of Christ, because Christ did it in His own will. In the in line with the will of the Father, and that's the only sacrifice that can take away the sin of the world. The reason we believe that that, that sacrifice supersedes the animal sacrifice is because... And even it supersedes the, the limit as well, as you're saying. Because for the adultery, there has to be stoned to death. But with the Jesus sacrifice, now it doesn't have to be, right? No, you don't need more sacrifices and it can forgive all sins. Because the animal sacrifice cannot change your conscience. So it's an animal. It's just a it's just a short representative. So when when you pray to God, who do you pray to? You pray through Jesus, is it? To the glory of God the Father. We pray to the Father in the name of Jesus by the power and by the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we pray with the three persons in mind. Did the Jewish people pray the same way? No. Well, no, I don't. They, they, they never formulated. How, how did they pray? Is it similar to what Jesus prayed in the Lord's Prayer? So you have the, Levit the Levitical doxology, for example. There is a yes. kind of prayer. Does the Jewish people pray the same way as Jesus did in the Lord's Prayer? No. J Jewish people don't but, pray that way. No, they don't pray that way. But the reason why Jesus... Does the Jewish people only worship the Father? Great. Sorry? Does the Jewish people only pray to the Father alone? Or they pray to the Holy Spirit and the angel of the Lord as well? They don't pray, as far as I know, they don't pray to any of them. They just pray to uh, a new name to God, that is Hashem. Hashem. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, I know that they are calling him right now the most popular name among non-Jew, among, among non-Christian Jewish. Yeah, that would be the best term. They call God Hashem, which is an invented, a made-up name that came centuries later. It, it's not written in scripture, in any scripture. Probably, maybe the Talmud or something like that, but yeah. So when they are praying to this God, do they pray in, like obviously you pray in the name of the Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit, right? Is that how you pray? Yeah. However... Do they pray the similar way as the name of the Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit? How do they pray? For example, when they, you see in Jonah, in the prophet Jonah, you have that story, I think, in the, in, the fish, in Islam. In yeah, in the fish. So that's the Old Testament. He was a prophet. When he prayed to God, he did it by, I don't remember exactly the words, but he had in mind the temple, the temple. So Jewish people used to pray always looking at the temple in Jerusalem. Who did it like? Is he only pray to the Father? Yeah. For example, like in the Lord's Prayer, when everybody asks Jesus, "How should we pray?" Right? Yes. He yes. Can you tell me what's the Lord's Prayer? Ika, Ika. Uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be, uh, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Yes. And so, so short answer: they don't, they don't, they don't recite that prayer. 
they don't. They don't recite. But they don't recite. For example, if Jesus was saying, the Father alone in the heaven should be worshipped in the Lord's prayer, the Son and the Holy Spirit shouldn't be there, or he just not mentioned it. In what sense is not mentioning it in that sense? Jewish people, you mean? No, no, like for example, when people came to Jesus, like for example, you are Jesus, right? And people ask, how should we pray? But you are only telling that only the Father in the heaven should be praying. Why would you say that? And then, why would you not say the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the Lord's Prayer? Why okay. then the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer is a model of prayer. It's a model, it's a model of prayer. It doesn't mean that that's the only way we can pray. Oh, it doesn't mean that's the, the only no, way. No, because Jesus, in the Gospel of John, he also said, and you will pray to me, and everything you ask in my name, and he's talking to the apostles, and he's talking when he will go back to the Father, to the presence of the Father. Because God is listening, right? Yes. Father is listening. Yes. But what he said, what Jesus said to the apostles, is whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my name, and you ask me, I will do it. He's not saying necessarily pray to the Father. Is that whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. So as Christians, we can pray to the Father, but also we believe that we can pray to Jesus so that the, the, the prayer can be listened. So the model of prayer is the Lord's Prayer. So, and we believe that a right way to pray is always in the name of Jesus. When we say in the name of Jesus, it's by the merits of Jesus because of, the, of his sacrifice on the cross and because he is the advocate we have before the Father. Right now, but he's also a Lord, right? Because the Lord's Lord. prayer means the court, right? That's yes. what it means. Yes. So it is only should be applicable to somebody who is a Lord alone, right? So. Ah, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a conversation, not not that much a debate. He's no, really asking me. Yeah, we're just having yeah. a normal He's asking me yeah, questions it's, it's about Christianity and Trinity. In the they want to try to win. Like he wants to win, I want to. He win. wants to yes. understand. Yeah. He doesn't want to we're diminish not, or to having, destroy. No. So I'm explaining Christianity, yeah. the Trinity, and all that. So yeah, that it's not like you are wrong. I'm going to beat you yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah, that. He's yeah, yeah, happy to have happy you. Happy to have his belief. We are happy to have our beliefs. Oh yeah, there uh, always. I need a conversation like this to be honest because I also uh, yeah, I also was the, part of the uh, of the mayhem happening before. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the main question was like because when people were saying how should we pray and that's the Lord's prayer because the Lord's prayer the definition it means should be. It's only for the Lord. Whoever the Lord is, is only for them, right? It's only for the Lord. So in the Lord's Prayer, the Son and the Holy Spirit is not mentioned. Even though Jesus is mentioning in other passages that if you want something, you should pray to me or like yeah, yeah, yeah. said. But the question was, why did he not mention his name and the Holy Spirit name in the Lord's Prayer? Because Jesus is also Lord, right? Yeah. Holy Spirit is also Lord, right? Yes. So why then not mentioning them in the Lord's Prayer? The Holy Spirit. Yeah, Holy Spirit and the and the Son as well. Because yes. they are Lord as well. Yes, because the relationship we have with God is because also of the Holy Spirit, but we are given, so we are saved that we may contemplate the relationship between the Father and the Son. There is a more highlighted aspect in salvation and in the relationship between the Godhead, the Father and the Son. So the Holy Spirit is the, I would say many times, the less mentioned person of the Trinity. What do you think is that? If it's the God and very important, what do you think is the less uh, mentioned person? Yeah, but the Lord's God Prayer... Okay. is the most important person. Right. Sorry? God is the most important person because yes. the whole book is about God. Yes. So why do you think Holy Spirit is mentioned less? Why is... And, and what, yeah, yeah, what do you think is God might be? What, what we believe is that in the name of Jesus, we pray, the Holy Spirit brings the prayers to the presence, so He is on earth, and He is uh, the person of the Trinity in power to bring prayers to the presence of God. When we pray, we pray in the merits of Jesus Christ, in the name of Christ, so that the prayers will be... You know the, the sayings of the Jesus, is it the red letter? The red letter Bible? Not all, not all the Bibles are written like that. Some Bibles, you mean 
the, the, the ones that are written written in red, in red yeah, yeah. ink, right? Is it, is it sayings, Not all. The sayings of Jesus, right? Amongst yeah, they are highlighting the, the, the words that Jesus say. Okay, so among those words, does, does Jesus come to God, but like mention the three in one as a person as God? Yeah, does. yeah. But I know what you mean, the Lord's Prayer. I believe the, the reason why it's called the Lord's Prayer is because the title Lord there is applied to Christ as well. So it's the, Lord, it's the prayer that the Lord taught people to pray. So, and the title Lord is applied to Christ in that oh, title. He's not mentioning himself. Oh. So the, 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 the Lord's Prayer, sorry, the title of the Lord's Prayer is, okay, is, a, is, a, is a subtitle that, okay. that is not written in Scripture, in the Bible. That's but something that people what wrote. Automatically implies what you just meant. Sorry? If what you just meant, that when you say Lord's Prayer, it automatically implies Jesus as well, right? Yes. But if, Trin if Trinity was duality, which is, let's say, not three person, two person, Father and the Son only, then, in that case, he could just mention the Father alone. Because when Jesus was asked, he's also Lord. So he's only mentioning the Father as well. But then there's also another person in the, in the, in the Godhead, which is the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Why he did not then, because when he was asked, he's also referring to himself, I got that. Why is he leaving out the Holy Spirit? Well, the role of the Holy Spirit comes after. So is he not in the Godhead? Is he it's, in the it's in the Godhead. Right. It's in the Godhead. But that's the reason why the Spirit... If, if God is always there, if the God is all, Godhead is always there, and if this three person is always working in a equal way or whatever way, creating planets or whatever, then, then how come it's not technically important to mention him there? Do, do you understand the point? But not in that moment that he not mentions that. that not in that moment. I mean... I'm not saying it's not important in that moment, it's always important, but it's not mentioned in that moment, however, it's mentioned later. For example... Do you, do you, do you, I understand your point, why it's mentioned later, but do you not think it should be mentioned in there? Do you not think it should be mentioned in the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? Because the whole because scripture understand, understands and implies that the reason why this prayer reaches heaven is because the Holy Spirit is implied. The Holy Spirit is also God, a Lord. Yes. Right. So the Lord's Prayer should mention that, right? It's and not we, like a side God, that a lower God. Yeah, I'll mention it later no, on. We, we don't believe it's a lower God. Exactly. So we so, don't believe. We believe that all the attributes that made God to be God is equal with God. Right? Yes. So and God is not only the Father and Lord, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So my question was why he didn't mention the three persons, and why he only mentioned the Father and Lord. That's well. Because we believe, um, and that's a reasonable thing to say, so Jesus doesn't say all the time the Holy Spirit, so we don't take a separate text disconnected from the context, so we believe in the whole gospel. So when you read that, we also bear in mind what comes after. So for example, that's written in the gospels, we also believe that in the gospels, Jesus before ascending, and going back to the presence of the Father in heaven, he commanded people that every time a a person wants to become a Christian, he has to be baptized in the name, and it says, not three names, he says name in singular, but then he says three persons, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the, Holy, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. So these three names, and that's the requisite, that's the requirement to be baptized and enter into Christianity. baptism and worship is Well, baptism is the entrance for worship, but when you're baptizing, are you worship those three? Or because if Jesus is only worshiping the Father, even in, when he was worshiping, he was only worshiping the Father alone. Yes. He never worshiped the Holy Spirit, right? Did he? No, he never worshiped the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because the Holy Spirit is eternal, always there. Why did he not ever worship the Holy Spirit? Precisely because the distinction I told you. Yeah. Remember, the cause of the of the Son and on the Holy and, on, uh, and the Holy Spirit is the Father. That's, you made a good point. So, the Father generates yeah. the Son and the Holy Spirit. Can he not? Can can they because not the evolve, word, Can because they not exist with the Father generating them? What do we mean by generate? Then they would be three gods. Yes. Yeah, so exactly. If they can so, pop out, let's say yeah, pop out, yeah, yeah. the Father there independently and the Son there independently and the Holy Spirit over there independently, we would talk about three gods, and we would talk about three essences. But the fact that 
in a way, the son is always generated by the father, not the other way around. So if you don't think it's three gods, then why do you think it's three persons? The distinct thinking, distinct feeling. Because three gods would have the same three personhood as the, the three separate gods would think, would do stuff, right? Same like the, this three person is thinking and doing three things. But yet you're not seeing them as three gods, you're seeing them as one god with one essence, but three persons. Yes. Yes. So because if you had like three gods, these three essences would be just for them. So they, one has, A has his essence, B has his essence, C has his essence. Yeah. Then they can disagree with each other because they have different essences, different purposes. They would be three gods. But the fact that in the Trinity, you have the same essence shared to the fullest between the three persons of the Trinity, being the father, the cause without beginning, that means there's just one God. However, okay. yeah. can it be that, can it be that, like for example, Jesus is the Word of God, right? Does the Father has a different Word? Like, does Jesus have a Word? Jesus have a Word. What? Does, like, when you say Jesus is the Word of God, in what sense? Is it the spoken Word of God? In Islam, with some similarities in Islam, so do you believe as a Muslim that God created everything through His Word? Kalimatala. So, Kalimatala, however, because I know that there's uh, lots of dispute among Muslims about the meaning of Kalimatala, but we believe that God created also the universe through the Word of God. Yeah. So, the Word of God is, is Jesus. Well, is the second I person what of. It is. Like, for example, I think it's like, it's like you guys understand, but you understood in a, in a little bit different way. For example, the... the we have, of, sorry to interrupt you, we have a different concept of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, so, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, a, it's like you read the same thing, but you, you took it in a different understanding than what it is. Like, for example, the, the Father has a word, right? Does Jesus have a word? He doesn't have a word. He so is the he word. Speak? Okay. What, what do, do you mean, do you by, mean word? by word? Yes. Because the word is a spoken word. That's what the word means, right? What is the word is? Like, for example, this father, he can speak. That's the word of the father, right? Yes. Okay. Can the father think? Before he creates something, he has to think that I want to create trees, human beings. So father thinks as well, right? Yes. And father also has knowledge. Thinking and knowledge is not the same, right? He has knowledge, like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I follow knowledge. you, yeah. So that's three things. Then he has got a spirit. Yeah. Father has a spirit. And what else father can have? Like, yeah, so, so let's say father has these four things, but that doesn't mean these four are separate, distinct person. Like, I understand you said the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is a separate person. The Word is a separate person, but the Father also has thinking and knowledge as well. That doesn't make them another two more separate person. Do you understand? What I meant. No. You so. Want to no, 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 no. Sorry, I, I don't mean like if I, you are asking me if I want to understand that. No, no. It's like, do you get the point? Like, if if father has a word. Yes. Father has a spirit. Father has a knowledge and thinking as well. That doesn't make four person in one, right? For you, that means that he can be one having all these things. Yes. Yes. So, the spirit of God is a separate, distinct person, right? Yes. And the spirit of what? Sorry. And the word of the Father is a separate, distinct person. Thus, the thinking and knowledge of the Father is a separate person, or not? No. no. What you mean by Why? word of? Why sorry. Sorry. Can I understand better what you're asking? So, Father is a thinking? Yeah. Has a word. Yes. Father has a spirit. Yes. Is this two person that you're referring? Is 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 the word of the Father, right? The second person is, is the, the word, word of, of the Father. Father yeah. Right? which means before to understand it what we mean is the representative he speaks on behalf, on behalf. And, the, and he and does the, the things person, of the father the third person is the spirit of the father is the spirit of the father right yes the spirit of the father. yes same like that the father has a knowledge as well or he doesn't have any knowledge he has and a knowledge thinking, right yes so is the knowledge is a, and a fourth person of the godhead well, that knowledge is also the yes, the, the is all knowing. So, and that's an attribute that is given in the essence to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. How, so, 
what do you mean by attribute? So what's the difference between the word of God and the knowledge of God? What, how is it separate then? How is it? What is attribute? Explain to me what is an attribute. Yeah, so I want to get you well. I don't want to get you wrong. So, so hear the point, and that's why I mean like the unity of God, the Tawhid in Islam, in a way gets complicated when you think of attributes. Uh, the knowledge of God. So do you believe that there is something as the knowledge of God in Islam? And I will address the point you are saying, the knowledge of God. Do you believe that there is something in Islam that can be called the knowledge of God? And the word. Like, yes. Our understanding is the word of God okay. is the Father himself. It's not a distinct person. For you. For the Muslim understanding. Yes. Same like that the Spirit of God is the Father himself. It's not a yes. separate person. Same like that if God is giving you knowledge, like you know when you say the Spirit of God hover over around them, but sometimes if, if God says I'm giving you some knowledge or something, or God has a knowledge, or God is thinking, it, it also the, the Father himself is not a separate distinct person. So when you say the word of the God is a separate and distinct person, and the Spirit of God is a separate and distinct person, right? Is there what Trinity is? Then why the knowledge of God or thinking of God is not a separate distinct person? Do you understand my question? Yes, but I think that's the problem I see in Islam. No, so I'm not in, talking about in Islam. Okay, I can, I can. About, yeah, 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 yeah. So we understand what is your understanding. So we understand uh, what is your understanding. Then why the knowledge and thinking of God is not a separate person? Why? Is that? You, so yeah. So I believe that God is all knowing. Yeah. That title, God is all knowing. So we don't believe God has knowledge, like something separate. In the same way, I have money, but I'm not my money. Money is something I have, but it doesn't. It's not. It is not me. That's a different so thing. you're saying the knowledge of God is not God? It's the essence of God. God is all knowing. He knows everything because is that's who he is. is yes, that's, that's who he is. Is the money you set up about? No, 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 that's you. not me. Not that, the that, that's, the, that's the distinction is, I'm making. Is your knowledge is you? It's who you are. That's your attribute. Exactly. You're you are not one thing. I'm not an empty being and then knowledge is something that I put inside. So your knowledge is your attribute. That's the essence. So God, that essence. the essence of God, yeah. the essence, let's say the essence of God the Father is that all-knowing, almighty, and all that. And, that's and, an and essence of God. Knowing that's an essence. Okay. That's, yeah. Because the Word of God is also an essence of God. Exactly. He shares the essence of the Father. Yeah. So the essence Who of the Father, the, the Father, His essence is given to the Word of God who is the second person of the Trinity. But if the word of the Father, which is an essence of Father, right? Is the same essence, yeah. No, forget about Trinity for a second, right? Okay. I'm trying to understand your understanding. Okay. You said God is all knowledgeable. Yes. That's the essence of God, right? Yes. But that's not a separate person of God. But the word of God is also an essence of God, but it's a separate and distinct person. Yes. Do you understand? Why that is separate and distinct, and why the knowledge is not separate and distinct? The knowledge is not separate because to be all knowing comes from the attribute of the Father in the essence of the Father. So if the knowledge it is, is yeah. not a separate person, then the Word is also not a separate person. It is a separate person because by what now we mean. The, no, okay. what we mean by the Word of God, look even at the, at the term Word of, of yeah, belongs. The word is speaking. The Father is speaking. Word of God. But then the word is another thing. What is, what is the understanding of your word? Because one thing is to say word God. Word God. Another thing is word of God. Word of God means another thing that belongs to God. Another it's thing like that the belongs angel of God. like the angel of the Lord. Exactly. So does what the angel we mean of the God is God. What we mean Wait, does the angel of the Lord is God? Is God and also is the messenger of God because they have is the same the essence. Himself? He's not the father. Him, he's not the father himself. But is he because the in that say, in that's that's the, that's the way. So he is God in the essence of God, but is he is the, the angel of God because in that sense he is of the Father, of God the Father. Does there like you know there are angels like when you say angel of the God you're probably referring to the Jesus right? Yes. But I'm not talking about Jesus now. I'm talking about does God has angels? Yes. So if there's angel of God, does that mean those angels are God? No. No, they don't. So said like that, is this angel of God 
or, or the angel of law, does that mean is is God? He is God because of the description he has. Yeah, you see that that's so the, the, the angels, even though they're angel of God, they are not God himself, but this angel of Lord is you're referring to as God. Yeah, but so when we say I told you before, the term angel means the one who speaks on behalf of is a is a flexible term. So the word angel means a herald. Someone who speaks on behalf. Trying to, trying to not be able to understand. Okay. So does God has has a word? He can speak, right? The Father. A physical. The Father. He can speak, right? He can speak. Okay. Does he have a spirit? His spirit. He is a spirit. Yes. And he has knowledge or understanding of. Yes. Right? So this word of God is his son. Okay. Yes. And the spirit that he has is the Holy Spirit. The spirit that he has. Is it the Holy Spirit? His spirit as well. He's right. a spiritual being. But doesn't mean that he's the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit is a separate... It's a separate being, yes. Separate being. No, separate person, sorry. Separate person. Separate person, but it's God. It's, it's God but is the Trinity. Does this Holy Spirit and the Son, can they th does they have the same speaking power as the Father? Does they create it of the Spirit and does they have knowledge as well? Yes, they have the same knowledge. They are all knowing. They are all knowing. And they know each other. So, for example, in the, in the Gospel of Matthew... the Word of God, Word of God became Jesus, and how the Word of God is the Jesus? Because that's the Word of God, that's the God Himself, right? You mean how He became the person, the human person yeah, of Jesus? How, not the human person, how He is a separate person then? How the Holy Spirit is a separate person? Yeah, because that's a mode of existence. If God is not one in three persons... If you he would have said he is not the Word of God, he's just himself. Because the Spirit of God is not the Spirit, right? Of the God, is it? It's the Holy Spirit. Because they have different terms sometimes. Sometimes it's called the Word of God, the Membra. Sometimes it's called uh, the Angel of the Lord. But it's referring to the same person. So you have the same thing in Islam. God has 99 names, right? So, but it's the same... God. Yeah, but it's only one. We believe one person to be the God. Yes, like we Jesus, believe there's Jesus, one God. How many names Jesus has? Son of God, Angel of God. Many, I don't know the many. number of it names. Does not mean Jesus is ten. Doesn't mean Jesus is ten, exactly, exactly yes. So Allah has 99 names, that does not mean Allah is 99. It's just a name. Mm -hmm. Same like that, Jesus has many names, like all uh, the everlasting Father, the like any Son of Man, Son of God. He has got many names. Angel of Lord. He has got many names as well. That doesn't mean he's yeah. many. Yeah, he's yeah. Only one. Okay, so we are gonna we are we are gonna you made a point before. It's like we see the same thing but we interpret it differently. Yeah. So I interpret the Bible the way I read it. Yeah. So we can make it very long this conversation. But perhaps something that may help you is see this. We have spoken about how in Genesis God says, let us create mankind in our image. If, for example, if God is saying God is one person, and can he use as our, as like a royal we or royal plural, can he use that? Or no, there's no, so there's no evidence that in Jewish literature existed that uh, plurality of, ma uh, of majesty. There's no proof. Anyway, if, let, can I... Say, if God says our, right? so it means many God. No, because... We Why don't not? depend. We Why don't not? depend just on that verse. Why not? We believe in one scripture. So we believe in the progressive okay. revelation so of everything. You believe in the one scripture. Yeah. And you are saying that uh, let us make man in our image means many. Yes. So it means many gods. Or it doesn't no, it doesn't mean many gods. Why not? So, our means many. It so means if you take that verse yeah. out of context yeah. and you only read that verse, yeah. how may, how do you know that God is a Trinity? Three. He's saying us. Us means many. Can be millions, yeah. billions, right. trillions. Yeah. So you need the rest of scripture to know uh, the meaning of all that references. So as you see, for example, but in the Revelation... Already meanings like many gods, right? No, but you, for example, when you go to Deuteronomy and when you go to the New Testament, yeah. so in Deuteronomy, in the yeah. Shema, it says the Lord is one. One is plural. But a cat, one, Meaning can mean is not saying one person, right. necessarily one person. There is just one God, one essence, 
but God. up to that point, it's not one God. It's a unity of God. It's a right? it's a unity of persons, one God. No, you, like, the Ahad does not mean single, right? It means plural. One, but can encompass the meaning of unity of something. Yes. So, for example, let, let me let me Genesis two twenty four. Yes. Sorry, so let, just to make sense, uh, when Adam and Eve uh, came together, and they let somehow they married, it says that they became one. The word for one there is a hat right. as well. So it's implying that two persons can unite and make one a hat. It, it is not talking about one person. It means a unity. The United Nations, it means unity. It doesn't yes. mean one person. Exactly, and I believe that. So does two persons become one, it means a united. It does not mean one person. Yes. Right? It means two persons. Well, what I believe okay. in the Trinity, I believe in the variety of persons. But I believe in the same way, how many humanities are in the world? How many humanities? Human beings, you mean? The term is there is one just there's just one piece called humanity, right? But we have many persons. We have billions of human yeah, beings. If if you go in that sense, then that one would mean three God or billion God. You cannot give that example in there because it doesn't apply. Exactly, the analogy works until until certain no, it extent. Work because when you say humanity, but there's seven billion of them, there's seven billion in there. Of but persons, it's a yeah. It's yes. a unity. Yes. Unity does not mean one God. Unity does not mean like one. It's a, it's a unity. The unit, the word unity itself means many in there. So when you say you believe in one God, it's a one unity of God, not one God, because the unity itself it means. It's a, it's a combination of many. No, because as I said before, the generation, and you spoke about the generation, so we said before, the son cannot generate the father. So the what, we, the what father. we believe in the Trinity right. is that the father is the cause of the son and the Holy Spirit. So in a way, so realistically speaking, data given, so God is like that, it's a Trinity, and the three persons of the Trinity are almighty, all-knowing, all-perfect, all-glorious, all that you can say. However, that glorious and that perfect essence comes from the Father. He is the source. So, and so he is the main God then? Should he is the be, source. No, because you see, maybe what your understanding is coming from the people who were there 2,000 years ago, right? Because you are actually following what they are telling you. I believe that. For example, if you are born in a Hindu religion, tell me what would have been your belief. A Hindu, a Hindu if religion. If you are born in a Hindu religion, yes. Or if you are born in a Muslim religion, or if you are born in a Jewish religion, tell me what would have been your belief. Different. Different. If I, if I was a Muslim, I would believe differently. Exactly. If you are born in a Hindu family, why would you believe in a different thing? That doesn't mean that is the truth. That does not mean that, that is true. That doesn't mean it's so true. For example, if you are born in a Hindu religion. Even though it's not true, you would think it is true and you would fulfill it through your, your whole life, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, now to a Hindu person, what they believe is what you are doing is not true. Same like what the way you identify them as not true, they will identify you as not true and what you are doing, even though you think it's right, is wrong. Same like that, if a Hindu person, whatever they are doing, you know that is wrong, but they think it's right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So for them, you are wrong. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is their belief came from less than a few thousand years back from their ancestors and your belief is coming also from a few thousand years back from your ancestor of your their understanding of the scripture is in you. That's why you believe in it. Otherwise you wouldn't have believed what you believe right now. No, but for so example, when, can I so my point is So you are saying the father generates them, but mm -hmm. somehow you are saying they're still equal and stuff. Could you could you think they might have misunderstood the concept? Like the Father alone should be the, the the God, which is the Lord, which should be prayed all the time. Even Jesus has done that. Okay. So let's in a nutshell. Yeah. If the Old Testament and the New Testament they reveal God to be like that with that plurality, so let's say if the Father is the source eternally, He without beginning He generates the Son, and He proceeds the Holy Spirit. So let's say He's the source of the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. We cannot talk of three separate gods because they share the same essence. So they are in relation to the Father. They don't pop out separately. They belong to one another. There is that unity. They are not separate. So that's why I think even when we talk about the analogy of you one humanity, many persons, persons. No, you one, said, you said persons. they are distinct persons, but they are not separate in terms of divinity. So the, the son doesn't operate independently from the father. That's why it's a perfect unity. They always existed united without beginning. So what if the understanding was always there that the father has the word and he uses the word to create everything just like the Genesis said, like let there be light. Right? Yes. So what if the John misunderstood when the word of the God became flesh of Jesus, like, oh man, it's so common, cool, like, okay, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's long, it's long. The problem is, I want to make it short because yeah, otherwise yeah. we can speak for hours. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, I told you, in Genesis you see the plurality, but also in Genesis, you see uh, that the angel of the Lord yeah. is identified as Yahweh. Right. So sometimes uh, you see that Yahweh appear, for example, in the burning bush, the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses. Right. But then the same person is saying that he is Yahweh. Moses asked his name and he's saying, my name is Yahweh, that's my name. But the Yahweh is the father, right? It's also the name of the father. And also you see that later on in Exodus 23 is, is Jesus is Yahweh. Yes. Okay. So there's one name and that's the one God, Yahweh. And we, whatever the persons so of the, the person saying Yahweh, can it not be meaning that he's representing Yahweh? By being Yahweh, for example, I told you, Exodus 23. God appears, God tells Moses, like, come and meet me. He says, come and meet me. He says, Okay. And uh, God is telling Moses, come and meet me. Okay. No, let me do it well. I don't want to be wrong on I'm that. Still don't worry, it's fine. Yeah. No, but I want to do it well, sorry. Okay, okay. So having in mind all having in mind all what I have told you so far. I'm 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 still confused about the, the situation where Jesus is the word of God. And the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of God or is it like a separate Spirit? The Spirit of God, Holy Spirit? Is it a separate it's Spirit? It's a separate person. Is it a separate Spirit? Or what is it? Is it a Spirit? It is a Spirit. It is a person. It is called the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but you know the Word of God. It yes. came from the mouth of the God, or let's say the mouth of the God, right? Yeah. So this Holy Spirit is a Spirit of God or is a separate Spirit? Like Adam. No, the Holy Spirit yeah. is the, the is one of the persons of the Trinity. And is it the Spirit of the of the God? Right? Yes. It seems like that Jesus is the Word of the God. Yes. Okay. That explains a little bit why these reference of God are telling of the Father. So that's why they are generated from the Father. So because when it says so this is this is my, my this is very important. So if the angel if the word of God is he created he's capable to create he's the judge of all beings he's the lord he gives eternal life he sends people to hell but that's the father himself right that's the word of the father right so that's the father himself right? that's not the father so he has the father's prerogative but at the same time he's the angel of god so of god means that he belongs to another he's part of another he comes in the name of another so, so that's why they are the same but distinct uh, distinct persons. That's the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of God. Spirit so of God, it's yeah, of it's God. Father, right? Of God. Of yes, the it's of the Father. That's a reference. They come from the Father. They are sent that's, by the that's, Father. That's what I'm trying to understand. If the Father has word, he speaks, God can see, right? Yes. God has a spirit and God has a knowledge. Yes. So why only the words and the spirit is a separate per or, or a person, why the, the sea and the knowledge is not a person? That's what I'm trying to say. The knowledge is not a person. So why the spirit is a person? Maybe it's not a person. No, and we believe it's a, it's it's a spirit a is a person because the same Bible I'm, I'm, I'm using to describe you, the Trinity, also says that the Holy Spirit uh, saved the people in the wilderness. 
So, for example, there's Maybe a bus. Because he was created by the Father. If the Spirit of the Father, sorry, if the Spirit of God and the Word of God is a separate person, then the then the the seed of God, the, the how he sees it and how he thinks, should also be separate. But somehow he's not. No, because what he has the prerogatives of the Father. He's also identified as the wisdom that was there yeah, in the creation. Is the yeah. So is the wisdom of the Father is a separate person? It's a separate person, yeah. The Which is the same Holy Spirit, because as we said before, each person of the Trinity has different titles. That doesn't mean they are different persons. So the Word of God, the Angel of the Lord, is the second person of the Trinity, but he holds different titles. So the wisdom of the God is the Holy Spirit? Yes. But is he not the Father himself? He's not just, the Father him You are just giving itself a different name, that's what you are doing. That's what probably your ancestor understood it in this manner. No, what if I give you a passage for... The wisdom for... of the Father cannot be a separate person. Okay, let me help you out with this. This is Yahweh speaking, this is God speaking to Moses. Okay. Sorry. He's saying to Abraham, God appeared to Abraham and he said, I'm it's your God in the form of a man, yeah? yeah. He said, I'm God and I have chosen you and one day and I'm going to bless those who bless you and I will punish those who wrong do, who do wrong to you. God, right? Yes. So if the word of the Father came in, it was the but Father But he says, himself. no, he says that he is God. That's yeah, the point. So. He is the Father. You see, the, I think what misunderstanding us is like, we are thinking God as a human being. Like, for example, your word cannot be in, in USA right now. Your word has to be in here. Your thinking can only be here. Your, your body and your thinking cannot be in many places at the same time. But God, we, God probably doesn't have that limitation. God can be in one place and in many places at the same yes. time. The Father himself, not any other person. Let's say there is only Father alone in the, in the Godhead. There's nobody else. And that Father, when he sends his word, that was came down as a human being, not a separate person, is the Father himself, because the Word is the Father of the, the Word is of the Father. It's the Father's Word. So when the Abraham see that so, man, it probably means so I am God. It means he's referring to that God. It's the Father himself. Yeah, right? but as I told you, so they are, the three persons of the Trinity are of the presence. So the reason why the Father sends the Son is not because he needs someone to foresee or anything. It's again, we go to the mode of existence of God. When you have a trinity, you can he's say that word, justice and word, love right? was always there eternally. But when did he become son? Because he's the word of God, right? Yes. But he's not the son of God. He's the son of God. It, when, did he, when did he become that? I told you all the time. So he's, he always existed like that. And he's called the son of God because he has the attributes of the father. But he never became the son of God. He's begotten, not made. So he never became the son of God. He always existed like that. So that's why, for example... Well, he didn't exist as the Son of God, right? He existed as the Word, or, or Son of God. Son of God in the, te in, in the sense of... Yeah, in the spiritual sense, yes. He is the Son of God. He's generated by the Father. Okay, He's the Son of God, but He's the Word of God. So Jesus says it like this. You said before, the Father is greater than I. Yeah, yeah. And you pointed that? like... There is no one, there is no, there is no God beside me, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think the text says something like, I don't share my glory with anyone else. Right. That's written there in that same passage. Then Jesus, he identifies as the God who spoke to Isaiah. And then when Jesus... I, I is, about in the New Testament. Exactly. And when Jesus was about to die, he prayed. So after... He said, the Father is greater than I. He prayed, and he said, and that's written in the New Testament, and he prayed and said, Father, I'm coming back to you so that I will go back to the glory I had with you before the world began. What do you make of that? If there's just one glory that begins also, to did, God... Did Jesus share the glory with the disciples? No. He did not? No. 
Okay, you said Jesus did not share the glory with the disciples, right? So you are going to John 17? Yeah, 22. Yeah. So I have given them the glory that you gave me, which is Jesus was given, and he has given them the glory. So they may be one as we are one. Yeah. So as you said, God cannot give his glory to anybody. Yes. Sure. Share his glory to anybody. Because you have to understand what glory he's talking about. Is it the glory Correct. of the God? That's a good point. Yeah. Uh, what kind is of it, glory? Is it the glory of the God or is it the glory of some sort of other stuff? So the, the, the glory that Jesus is taking from the Father and giving it to the disciple is a different glory than the Deuteronomy or the in the Old Testament. I don't know this Deuteronomy. In the Old Testament, God says, I do not share my glory. Yes. So just by that line alone, you can understand that this is not the same glory. So, yeah, you know, the Son may glorify you. So, let's start, uh, let's make this point or yeah, read yeah, this. Yeah. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence. So, with that glory I had with you, I had, so that's implying that's the same glory. Right. So, go, it also so Jesus. In here as well, if, if you're not mistaken. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm going to explain that. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. So, I'm not going to. Before the world existed. Right. So, we have to acknowledge that Jesus is saying yeah. that he had pre existed with the Father before the existence of the world, before the creation of the world. Right. And he shared the same glory. He's not saying that you had your glory, I had my glory, because the same scripture, the Old Testament, speaks about the glory of the angels the glory of the angels are not the glory of god there were distinct level there are distinct levels levels of glory yeah so he's probably referring to the glory of the angels no because with that glory i had with you the father yeah with you with right. with you before the world existed yeah it means probably the planet because obviously before everything was existed it was like he, like there were souls was created like you know souls was created angels was created right no so is now the father glorify me in your presence yeah. with that glory that glory i had with you right. with you so they are sharing with you yes. they are sharing the same glory right but it's probably not talking about the same glory as god because he also gave the glory to the disciples so that they can be one let me us. let me explain it you made a good point before talking like sometimes the word glory has distinct has distinctions yeah. so so when you go here like you talked about the angel had a glory as well right yeah but that's not the glory of god exactly so, so same like that you see angels came after god same like that well the son of god should mean came after god or proceeded from god obviously you understand in a different way but if the son of god came after god or created or generated by god it, it should apply the same glory as the angels has because you see God do not share the glory to some, to somebody else. Yes. The, the godly glory. But it can share other glory, like the angel had glory. It can share. Same like that. Yeah. When created human, beings, it, yes. let's let's say because like the term that. glory, so for example, so in a way when, when when a, when, a, when a football team yeah. wins the Champions League, yeah. they achieve a certain level of glory. Okay. In a way. And angels are superior to that glory. That doesn't mean and the Old Testament makes that distinction very well okay. that the glory of the angels so are not the trying, glory of God. So what you're trying to say that he is asking for the glory that he had before the world he was there, right? Yes. Is that glory he's talking about? Okay. So, so what I'm making, saying, what I'm saying, what I'm now saying. Now he's saying, I have given the glory that you gave me because he was asking the same glory. If you, if you attach this two part, he's saying, give me a glory. So whatever glory that he had, he's giving the same glory. He's not distinguishing the glory. And he's saying, I'm giving the same glory 
to my disciples so that they can be one with us as we are one. Yeah. As we are one, Father and I is one. So that the disciple can be one with us. This one does not mean in one essence. It means... No, they don't mean one. Uh, exactly. For the, for the human beings, for the disciples, yes. it's not saying that they will share their glory. Exactly. Because so when, fa when Jesus is mentioning I and the Father is one, he's probably meaning the same understanding of how oneness was meant in that sense. Yeah, because what comes, so Jesus is making a, here a prayer. He's making a prayer for his mission that he will be back yeah, but what I'm trying to say, you are saying it's a different glory. But yes. what I'm saying is not the different glory because he said, you gave me the glory that I had, I give it to them so that they can be one with us. That's what I'm trying so to it's explain. Not the same glory what distinction? As the God's glory. What distinction? So, yeah. one thing is to be glorious. Right. God is the source of glory, right. it's eternal glory. And Jesus is pointing to the fact that he pre existed eternally because before the existence of everything, what was before the existence of everything? It was angels. It was some other stuff. Nothing. So he's it's saying before that before the world, it doesn't say before everything. But it means he, this planet. But this is Jewish understanding, right? So we spoke uh, long ago about the, the meaning of in the beginning. Okay. When it goes back to the in the beginning, it's a reference to Genesis. The creation of the universe okay. is creation. So and Jesus is identified as the one by whom everything was made. He doesn't fall into the category of things made. That's what you're trying to understand based on your understanding, right? But based on what is written only, here. Yeah, but he's saying, this glory, give it to me before I had. Um, but remember, this is New Testament. So they had a new understanding because these are Gentiles who has slightly different understanding of the No, Old John Testament. was a Jew. Okay, so if G God says, I do not share my Glory, glory with anybody. Yes, right. but remember Jesus that before asking, Isaiah, he has described himself as one essence and different persons. Yeah. So same was, he's asking for the same glory and then he's giving it to the disciple. Yeah, but so what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is, let's define that also in the Gospel of John, do you see Jesus, that sometimes is to see glory, is to see a miracle. So for example, uh, when he raised... Now you're changing the word, right? No, I'm now giving flexibility the, because why, the word why glory... Not, why would you not take it as this glory and that glory same? Well, I'm trying to explain that. Because so, this glory is not meaning a miracle. It says, I have given them the glory that you gave me. Which one he was asking, that give me the glory that I had with you. Yeah, but He's not listen. for a miracle. So, the reason why... No. This is... This is very important because Jesus, for example, sometimes is like, I have shown glory by performing miracles. You can see that in John 2, you can see that in John 10, so that they will see the glory of God, for example, is when they see a miracle. So here, Jesus is saying, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Send them so who? he's Send who? the disciples. Okay. The disciples. Right. And he's making the, the point. And I sacrifice myself for them. Okay, then. Okay. Yes. Then where he's asking the glory? Where? Okay. So you saw that. I pray not to this, but also to those who believe in me. Okay, those are a message. May they all one. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. So you see, this is the, the way he spoke. But people could misunderstood what he's trying to say. He's so, saying, I am the Father is in, as your Father is in me, and I am in Father, so that they can be in us as well. Yeah, but this so is this not the same not, glory. There is exactly, a degree. So no, but it's not a degree for Jesus. It's a degree for the disciples. Because would you say, no, to say. no Christian believes that we, we are glorious as God That's is? The reason I was trying to say, this understanding that you have is 2,000 years old from the 2,000 years old people, and it transferred to you by generations. So if you were born in a Hindu religion, this understanding of text would have been totally different to you. No, but look, he's saying, so the term glory they in this be, gospel, the look, same author. Read, read the line. May they be all, all one. be one. And he goes on explaining what this one means. As you, Father, are in me, I am in you. So they may be one in us. Yes. So, so, but that doesn't does mean, mean that to be God. one means to be eternally one exactly. and to share the same attributes. Exactly. That's, That's not for the disciples. But when you go back yes. to the angel of the Lord, 
he is one in the same attributes. No, but what I'm trying to say, just like this does not mean that these disciples are God and they're eternal, same like that Jesus does not mean he's also eternally within the Godhead. Yeah, but right? look, Father, yes, I desire, prayer, look, Father, I desire those you have given me to be with me where I am, then they will see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the world's foundation. Yeah. So that's exactly in line what I've been trying to tell you. The Son is generated, is pointing to a glory He had before the creation of the world. So before of everything, that's in line what I'm telling you. So God, the Father, generates the Son, and by generating the Son, the Son has the glory of the Father as well in eternity because he but has no beginning glory than the god himself because this same glory he has given to the to the disciples no that's my, my point is that the glory that he gives to his disciple is the glory given to perform miracles but that's it doesn't say that it's, you are you are no, trying to say because that. this is a prayer jesus is praying so he's praying for three things in this yeah. prayer three things first one he's telling to the father to give him success in his mission. He's gonna be crucified, yeah. he's gonna be crucified, and then he's telling, like, grant me, so I want success in this mission, and I'm praying, I want, and, and I'm saying, that I want the glory that I had with you, the yeah. same glory of you, the same glory yes. that we have shared eternally right. before the world no, began. That's what your understanding is. No, it's because the understanding saying. of scriptures, because the understanding of scriptures is when that's it goes saying, to the term in the beginning. In time, what if they misunderstood the, the because this is there, but it's probably they're not trying to read the meaning of it. They're trying to get their own understanding of the meaning of it. So are you saying then that Jesus is confessing to be pre-existent? That he was there before, before the, the creation worlds, of not the creation before the worlds, like you know, like angels were there before the creation of the of the earth and everything, right? That doesn't make them God as well. Yeah, but for example, do you believe that's the Jesus portrayed in Islam? So do you think that uh, that doesn't make Jesus mighty in a way? So I don't believe that Jesus was made before the world began but after some point of eternity. Tell me this, does the angels was there before the, the world and earth began? Because based on the Jewish, even the Muslim religion, are we understanding, he created angels, then he created jinns. I think then, so, yeah. Then he created uh, human beings, that's how he's, he's all gone. So when angels was there, were the angels were there before the worlds? I think so, I know what you mean. Right, so does that make them go? No. Exactly. So if Jesus existed before the world began, because Jesus was created by the Father, does it then make him God? He's never described as that's to what, be with a beginning. Exactly. That's what, you're, you, that's what you've been taught to. But what if he was created in that sense, as you just said, in the world before, doesn't mean he alone was there. The angels were there as well. That doesn't make the angels God. Same like, if Jesus was also there before the world began, he could also be with the angels, you know what I mean? You yeah, but for example, if the same Jesus you are describing right now, you are saying that that doesn't mean, honestly, that doesn't mean just in the beginning or before the beginning, doesn't mean that... This is in the beginning taken, of the world, right? Yeah, before the world, yeah, world means before the, the world yeah, yeah. can mean that there is no time factor before the world because was created our understanding like there were souls were created first then those souls was given that's that's probably he's referring to that and also the glory that you're saying but then on other passages he said i'm giving the glory to my disciples but now you're saying it's a different glory. yeah but let's go back for example if you are implying that you also have to bear in mind that the same gospel is saying that through jesus and by jesus everything everything the word everything was made what do you make of that Sorry? The beginning of the Gospel of John yeah. says that through through Jesus everything was made. Everything was made. Because, what is everything? That's their understanding. But Genesis do not give that understanding. Genesis clearly says the Spirit of God and the God says, Let there be light, let there be water, let there be something. Is the God is speaking, the Father is speaking. It's not that Jesus is speaking there. But somehow they understand it in this way that the word of God is a separate person. That's why that's why they're coming up with this thing, maybe that the Father generates you know. I understand it's, it's just it's, you believe in it. That's why like I don't know man, it's Okay, but 
But if you take, if you take the, so do you believe the New Testament is true? Do you believe that, well, for example, when I describe Jesus according to John's Gospel, and it says that everything was made by him, everything was made by him. So what does that mean? That's, that's the New Testament. Apply, apply, yeah, okay. Because in the you New can Testament, say yeah, you, do, you don't believe in the New Testament. You can say you don't believe in the New Testament. But according to those terms, what the adjective is describing? If everything they're, they're was made... To, they're trying to describe Jesus as to be the God. That's what they're trying to Creator. Yeah. Well, yeah. good.